The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Listen-only mode. All right. Uh, hey, everyone. This is Dennis Kay here with the Belize Islands Real Estate coming to you live today. Good to have you all on board. It's going to be uh, an exciting presentation, and I'm very thankful that you're giving me a few minutes of your precious time today. Uh, I value that. Thank you for that. And I promise you uh, that it'll be well worth your time. So I logged on a little bit early. We are also doing a Facebook live stream right now. So I'm expecting uh, to have uh, several hundred people on the Facebook live stream, plus all of you who have registered for the webinar. So it's going to be a, a pretty exciting uh, afternoon, morning, uh, depending on where you're tuning in from. So I'm going to go ahead and show my screen uh, to make sure that you're you're seeing what I'm seeing right now there should be my opening slide coming up it's me a picture of me in Belize saying take massive action towards your goals and dreams I'm a big believer in this uh, Steph and I have operated it like this our entire lives and uh, we're enjoying the life of our dreams and uh, hopefully we can help you to do that as well uh, depending on what you're looking at doing so all right so let's see First of all, a couple of technical things before we get right into the information. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that all of you can see my opening slide and hear my voice. Sometimes these programs uh, give a little bit of a problem. So if you can hear my voice, please type in yes in the question box. If you can see my opening slide and if you can hear my voice clearly and there's no delays or anything weird going on with it, please type in yes in the question box. Excellent. Great. Great. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Jeff. Jeff Bellas, watching live from Belize. Hope you're doing well, Jeff. Missed you guys when we were down in January. Hope to see you the next time we're down. Thanks a lot for attending live today. You're not going to be able to see the slides, but I can send those to you afterward. So let's get going. I know I'm a little bit early, but a lot of you are online already and you're looking to go. So again, this is Dennis Kay. If you don't know me, I apologize. That's my fault. My name is Dennis Kay. Steph and I have lived in different countries all around the world. And one of the countries we spent the most time on is uh, Belize. We spent two and a half years living on the mainland and uh, over 11 years living on the island of Ambergris Key. Spent a lot of time on Key Cocker and uh, developed a pretty good business on Ambergris Key uh, buying and selling my own real estate and uh, also helping my clients uh, to invest in the island. And uh, right now I'm coming to you live from Paris. So if it doesn't look like I'm in Belize, I'm not. I'm coming to you from Paris. So we split our time now between here and the island. But uh, I have a lot of expertise uh, on Ambergris Key. And here's why. Uh, again, I have built up a really good business there. Uh, but uh, also I've been able to be uh, on different shows highlighting the beauty of Belize, HGTV, House Centers International, HGTV, Live Here, Buy This. I've been on several investing podcasts. Uh, the most recent, recent one I've been on uh, should be coming out in the next week or two uh, with Monica Sawyer. That was a, a really nice podcast. She's a great client of mine, bought property in the Secret Beach area. And so I'm excited to have that podcast released. And I'll send everybody the link once that's out. But uh, to get right into the questions and why you're attending today is that uh, many people are asking me, what is the draw of Belize? What is it that is bringing people to Belize compared to uh, other countries, other places in the United States or Canada? Why are people coming? And they are coming. And we're going to go over these uh, numbers here in a little bit. So I've highlighted what I think are the top four things, the top four reasons why people are coming into Belize. And here, here's the list. The weather, the lifestyle, the opportunity for adventure, and the opportunity for an escape. So let's first of all get into the weather. What is the weather like? Well, Belize is a tropical country, uh, so we have a lot of sunshine there. Uh, where I represent properties on or the island of Ambergris Key, Belize. And so Ambergris Key is just like you would expect any island in the Caribbean to be like. A lot of sunshine, a little bit of rain, uh, but not too much, especially compared to the mainland. So what we're finding is that especially uh, during the winter months, uh, those who live in the northern United States, such as Minnesota, New York, uh, Michigan, uh, Oregon, and an entire country of Canada in the winter months, uh, absolutely love coming down to Belize to escape those cold winters, to get out of the snow and the ice and, and that nastiness, and come down and soak up some sunshine and get their vitamin D. Also, the lifestyle. Let me just kind of give you some gratuitous island shots here of what you can expect when you come down if you haven't been here before. Uh, so people are coming down to live a different kind of life. And so they're escaping a normal life in the developed world of U.S. or, or Canada, and they're coming down to experience something different, uh, a more carefree, laid-back, 
flip-flops sort of lifestyle. And down here in Belize, you can uh, have this kind of life, swaying palm trees, crystal clear waters. Uh, you can swim with dolphins and manatees and nurse sharks and just, just have a, a really uh, new chapter, if you will. Uh, if you've never experienced this type of thing before, or if you've only experienced it on a limited basis, so for example, having a one or two week vacation each year when you went to summer tropical, uh, moving to Belize or owning property in Belize gives you the opportunity to come down for extended periods of time. So several weeks, several months a year, or maybe even living there permanently. And Belize offers uh, this opportunity. Also, uh, adventure. You know, we find a lot of people that are coming down are adventurous. Uh, they're willing to take some chances to experience something new. In fact, I like this quote here by Beth Clifford. Beth Clifford is one of the developers of the new Mag Mahogany Bay Village uh, Resort property on the south part of the island. And she said this in an interview in Forbes magazine. She said, retirement age people are baby boomers like myself, uh, and they are far more adventurous uh, than their parents or grandparents were. And we're definitely seeing this. We're seeing a lot of baby boomers come down to Belize by retirement properties, investment properties, and stay active well into their golden years. And this is what she said that was very interesting. She said, uh, people are often looking to go to warmer climates. So we see this. People are often choosing Florida or Arizona or warmer places like that to retire rather than sticking in the cold north. Uh, but uh, Beth said, and this is so true, some people are looking for a different kind of vibe. And that is why we see so many people coming to Central America and the Caribbean rather than going to more um, typical retirement destinations like Florida and Arizona, uh, California, things like that. And like she said, moving to Belize or having a place in Belize is a lot more exciting than moving to Fort Lauderdale. And so uh, imagine that you're around the dinner table or a, a cocktail party and you mention to somebody, oh yeah, I own a, uh, a vacation home in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And you know, you might get one or two oohs and ahs, but tell them that you have a uh, vacation home or a villa on Ambergris Key. Uh, that's going to that's gonna be a little bit more exciting to talk about. People are going to be asking you questions about that. More people will probably come want to come down and actually uh, stay with you. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. But um, people are coming uh, for that sense of adventure. Now, if we go back to the slide here just a minute, uh, escape. Uh, why are people coming to Belize? Well, you know, from working and living in Belize as long as I did and still considering, uh, you know, talking to people on a daily basis about their plans for Belize, what I find at the core of it is that they are missing something in their life that they are searching for a solution for. And, you know, that can be as simple as boredom. Uh, they've been stuck in their certain routines for so long. They're looking for a new chapter, a new life. They just want something to fill that void of, vo of boredom. They're looking for maybe a new chapter in their life. You know, a lot of the clients I work with uh, haven't had it easy. Uh, some of them have been through some difficult things in life, deaths in the family, divorces, uh, problems with uh, maybe friendships. And, you know, a new start in a country that is completely unfamiliar uh, can be refreshing. And we find that a lot of people who are buying in Belize – uh, are running, are running to, to something, uh, not running from the law, hopefully, but uh, running to something. And uh, Belize is giving them the opportunity to, to sort of renew themselves. And so that's what we're seeing. So those are my top things, uh, the reasons why I think people are coming to Belize. The weather, the lifestyle, the opportunity for adventure, and the opportunity for a new chapter or an escape. Now, Let's go to this next slide. I think it's really interesting uh, regarding people that are retiring and investing abroad. Now, this is a recent article that came out in Forbes magazine that said that the U.S. Social Security Administration is now sending over 700,000 people checks each month. Um, and that is a 40% increase over the past 10 years, 40% increase. So this shows that there is a strong push or pull uh, for people to retire outside of the United States. And they're choosing as places to retire, things like uh, what, or uh, places like what Beth said, uh, I, places in the Central American area. So Costa Rica, Panama, places like that. Also other places in the Caribbean, maybe the BVI, uh, other tropical islands. Um, they're not so much going to Europe. Uh, because it's a long way to go and they have closer options at home. But what we're finding is a lot of Americans are choosing the warmer destinations south. And what we're also finding out is that uh, since the Internet has become such a reliable source of information with so many checks and balances, that people are more willing to invest 
in real estate outside of the United States and Canada because now they can actually uh, go on websites, uh, see what properties are rated at, see what people like and don't like about a certain place. And now we're seeing more and more people actually take the retirement money, uh, funds they have in their self-directed IRAs, and invest those funds offshore. So, for example, about uh, 25% of all of the deals that I write are from clients of mine who are investing in Belize simply for their financial returns and doing so with money that they currently have in their self-directed IRA. So that being said, let me just pause very briefly here because I wanted to put this poll up at the beginning just to get an idea uh, who's online today and what you might be looking for. So I'm going to launch this poll. It should come up on your screen now. And it's a simple question. Have you been to Belize and Ambergris Key before? And this helps me to know how much detail to go in as we move forward. So there's four answers. No, not yet. No, but I'm planning a trip down. Yes, I have been there before. Yes, and I love it. So those are your four options. Go ahead, take a minute and vote. I appreciate that. And then once I see the numbers here start to um, go down and it looks like you're, you're, uh, you're completing the vote, I'll go ahead and close that out. I'll share it with the group and I'll even share it with you guys attending live uh, on Facebook today. All right, very good. Just give it a few more seconds, see if you of you are still voting. All right, so let's close the poll and share the results. All right, so it looks like, what do we have here? 57% of you on the webinar today have not been here yet. Wow, that's a high number, excellent. So hopefully this information will be very valuable for you as you plan your trip. 29% said no, uh, but I'm planning a trip down. Wow. Uh, 29% said, yes, I love it. All right. So it looks like uh, the majority online today uh, have never been here before. And the others of you have, and you absolutely love it. So very good. I'll take that into consideration as we, uh, as we move forward. All right. And of course, you see the little chart there in the upper right-hand part of the slide. This is taken right from Forbes Magazine's website that Belize is very attractive to those looking to move offshore because of the following reasons. And that is because it has a lower cost of living than the U.S., uh, the uh, it's very easy to gain residency. In fact, I got some questions coming in regarding residency. I'll go into detail in a little bit. Um, it is uh, medical cost in Belize. Our basic services are there, but we have good hospitals in Belize City. So Belize Medical Associates, Belize Healthcare Partners offer excellent medical care. Medical care is much cheaper than it is in the U.S. Tropical, hot and humid, what people are looking for. And then you notice specific suggestions on the right-hand side of that column is number one, Ambergris Key. And number two, Corazol. So we see what the draw is and what we're going. So the next thing I wanted to do is to show you that Belize is not for everyone. And I do not expect everyone to fall in love with Belize because everybody has different personalities. Everybody has different ideas of what they like life to be. And uh, here is a good example. Many of you have, have heard me talk about a good old Secret Beach. Love Secret Beach. Watch Secret Beach go from nothing back in 2009 when there wasn't even a road to access it uh, to what it is today. Uh, so I personally own properties there, love the area, and I'm, I'm a big fan. But not everybody's a big fan, and it's okay. Not everybody has to be. But if you go on TripAdvisor right now, and I just did this a few hours ago, you see that Secret Beach has a excellent rating of 53%, a very good rating of 23%. So that's a, a lot of people that like Secret Beach. And then you have a few percent that say average, and then you have those who say, ah, oh, it's poor, it's terrible. And here are some actual reviews that I put on my screen. Uh, so we have a, a, a guy who gave it a two, said uh, it's not worth the trip. Um, uh, one guy said, yuck, this is, this is just a week ago. And look at this and this. He said, what a joke. You have to purchase food or drink to get a seat. Well, the seats belong to the bars and restaurants. So I think you'd have it anywhere in the world. Uh, seats are very hard to come by. There's a guy directing you to a condo sale. You have to stop and you think it's part of the beach, but it's not. So, so some guy out there is hustling for condo sales. And uh, this guy thinks it ruins his day. Oh, well. Uh, the other one gave it a two. Uh, way overcrowded. Not worth it. So, um, well, there you go. Now, look at, look at the next slide because this is uh, the same week. Great time. Highlight of our three weeks. Awesome place to go. And if you notice, the highlight of our three weeks review, that was somebody that's been there coming to the island for 14 years. So, obviously... Uh, Belize is not for everybody, but it is for some. And so for those that it is for, 
let's just bring my uh, slides back up here. Let's see what's happening with them. So we find that Belize is booming in the tourism industry. Uh, I presented these numbers about three weeks ago. There was a 14.6% increase in overnight arrivals compared to 2017 and 2018, which results in over an increase of over 62,000 overnight arrivals. So you're probably seeing Belize a lot in the news. I mean, Sunday, CNN again had a nice article about Belize, and my website traffic went through the roof because of it, and I got tons of leads. People ask me about property in Belize because of this. Now, the question many of you are, are asking is, yes, I understand the draw of Belize, right? It's not hard to uh, not want the, uh, the the tropical beaches and the weather and the sense of adventure and all that, but why is Belize getting attention compared to other places that people also like to go, like Costa Rica, Panama, and the Dominican Republic. Well, again, I've been giving this a lot of thought and polling my clients who actually own property in Belize. And here's what the top four things that they told me why Belize won out over the other places they were looking at. Number one is that it's an easy place to do business. And by doing business, I don't mean actually owning a business, but I mean everyday life business. It's just, it's like moving outside of the U.S. and moving to a country that is sort of uh, American light. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I don't know how to put it any other way. It's like moving abroad with training wheels. You know, for example, when Steph and I first spent a considerable amount of time in Paris, where we are now, um, it, it was a challenge. I mean, you had to get used to things that were very different culturally, linguistically, uh, bureaucracy, a lot of bureaucracy. Um, you know, it, it was a big adjustment, right? Belize isn't a big adjustment. I mean, for most people, uh, you can come down and within two or three days, you feel pretty much at home. And then when you get into the business of everyday life, grocery shopping, paying bills, you know, that type of thing, you find it's very easy since English is the official language. It's just easy, easy to live there. Let's put it that way. Also, the second reason people liked Belize over other countries was that Belize offers easy immigration. Uh, so there are several ways you can easily come to Belize and spend extended amounts of time. Uh, you can do this through uh, work permits, uh, getting a residency permit. You can do this with a QRP program. Um, I don't have time in this webinar to go through them all, but there are very easy ways that anybody can just show up and live in Belize. Not true of most other countries, by the way. In fact, if you start to do some research, let's say you want to move to Paris, you want to move to Hong Kong, you want to move to Bali, Singapore, uh, Dominican Republic, places like this, go ahead and check online and see uh, how, what kind of hoops you have to jump through and things you have to prove in order for you to reside in those countries long term. Belize offers a very easy immigration program, and I think that's one of the major draws. Uh, the third thing is working, owning a business. You can actually work in Belize. Uh, it's not a problem. You can apply for a work permit. You can go to work for a company, or you can actually start your own business. And so that's a bonus. Uh, many people who are looking at owning property in Belize and spending an extended amount of time there uh, don't necessarily want to retire completely. Uh, they might want to have a little side business, do something to bring in some income. Well, in Belize, you can do that. You can work full-time, part-time. There's lots of things you can do to, uh, to earn some extra cash. And finally, you can do all this because English is the official language. So we know that in other countries, they may cater to English-speaking people. For instance, in Panama City, uh, certain parts of the Dominican Republic that, that cater to Americans and Canadians. However, in Belize, English is the official language. And so you want to buy some real estate, the transaction is all in English. You want to go to the doctor, your conversation is in English. You want to open up a bank account, everything's in English. There's a comfort level uh, to that. Uh, but also, because Belize Creole and Spanish are widely spoken, there's an opportunity for personal growth. So if you want to uh, spend some time learning another language, you can do that, but you don't have to do it. And it uh, makes Belize very attractive uh, to many people. Also, Belize still offers uh, opportunities. And what I mean by that is it is the uh, most least densely populated country in all of Central America. And it's got a very high population or uh, land to population ratio. For example, about 47% of the entire land area of Belize is set aside for national parks and marine reserves. Uh, so that's pretty good. So they're doing things right there. Uh, they work well with foreign investments. 
the country in general is still raw and native. In fact, even on the developed island of Ambergris Key, which some people say is is uh, is very busy now and kind of getting overbuilt, that just applies to San Pedro Town. Once you get outside of San Pedro Town, the island, island is very raw and undeveloped. So you can still find some good opportunities. And because of that, you can find affordable real estate. Now, try to go to a place like West Palm Beach, Florida, uh, South Beach, Miami, the Cayman Islands, the British Virgin Islands. You go to those places and try to find opportunities when it comes to real estate investments, good deals, places where you can find something affordable and uh, have a vacation home, retirement home without breaking the bank. You can't do it in those areas. What makes Belize attractive, it is still underdeveloped, raw, and there are plenty of opportunities available. And then finally, the last point, uh, people are very happy with the comfort they get over the protections uh, that the Belize government offers with owning real estate. So for example, if you are a local Belizean or a foreigner owning property, they are both afforded the same rights and protections and uh, it's not a long-term lease. You don't rent the land. You actually get freehold title. And that's very important to my uh, to my investors and retirees looking to own property because they want to be sure that what they put their money in, uh, they actually own. And it's not going to go anywhere. So those are the, those are the top reasons why uh, I think people are choosing Belize over other areas. Now, a question I've been getting a lot lately is what area is best uh, for expats, retirees? So Again, all but 29% of you on the webinar today have never been to the country. So you're probably thinking, you know, I go on the uh, on the websites and I see places in Corozal, Placencia, Dangriga, uh, City Village. I see places like Punta Gorda. You know, I don't know where any of these places are. So where should I begin to look? Well, Belize is a very diverse country. It's small, but it's diverse. And each area is absolutely uh, very different from the other area. You can, you can be in one part of Belize and you go one or two hours away and you're in a completely different world. No, no, not kidding. So what I want to do now is just go through some of the main areas that you might be interested in and giving you the pros and cons of each. For example, the first one I want to talk about is Corozal. Now, what is the draw of Corozal Town? Corozal is on the mainland portion of the country of Belize. It borders Mexico. And this is a town that sits on the bay. And this town seems to appeal to those who are looking to move to Belize on a reduced budget. So retirees that have a limited income, uh, others who uh, maybe uh, might be living off some sort of pension or uh, disability, uh, people that have a fixed income each month that is lower, they still want to live somewhere tropical, experience a different life for, for every, everything we just mentioned, the, the, the adventure, the new chapter and whatnot. Corozo might be a good option for you. Now, it's not for everybody. It is a Central American town. And so that being so, it has its pros and cons. It, it, it's good and it's bad. Uh, it is close to Mexico, which is a good thing because you can hop over the border into Chetamal and you can find all the big creature comforts like Sam's Club, McDonald's, a bigger town atmosphere to buy groceries at, things like that. Not that Corozo isn't self-sufficient in itself, but... Um, People that Corazon appeals to uh, tend to be, in my opinion, just, again, just working with different clients who have purchased property there, they tend to be more loners. They tend to be very self-sufficient. And, and in other words, they don't need a lot of outside stimulus. They don't need a lot of things to do. They're happy to sit with a book all day, tinker in the yard, uh, live out a more quiet retirement, so to speak. Uh, they tend to be not as adventurous as, as others. And they tend to just... Uh, kind of stick to themselves. And again, I'm just giving generalizations here, but through my years of working in Belize real estate, this is the type of place that appeals to generally this type of person. So if you think you'd like it, I advise you to go there first because it's, how can I say this? It's, um, it's interesting. And usually if I have someone looking at properties, for instance, in Placencia, Ambergris Key, Corozal, different areas, Corozal is the place where I find uh, people buy the least. So it's the last place that people buy after they've researched everything else. And uh, well, go, just go and you'll see, you'll see for yourself. I don't want to talk bad about it, just go and see for yourself. Another place is Placencia. Placencia is 
a nice place. I've been there several times. Steph and I have stayed down there at different hotels and resorts. Love Placencia. This is also on the mainland of Belize, but it's south of Belize City. And you can get there by flying either Tropic or Maya Island Air. These are some beautiful pictures of the Placencia Peninsula. And uh, I like Placencia for many reasons. Uh, first of all, it still has that quiet, laid-back feel uh, that you expect on the mainland. Uh, but Placencia Town, there's enough to do in the, in the sense that there's great beach bars, there's fantastic restaurants, restaurants. In this area, if you want to have a vacation home, retire there, then you absolutely need a car to get around, which is fine because you can take that car and you can drive around to different parts of the country. You can go into the uh, Mountain Pine Ridge area where there is uh, cave tubing and Mayan ruins to explore and different things like that. So I find a lot of my clients uh, tend to like Placencia quite a bit. Uh, there's also the water sports aspect of this part of the country. Uh, for example, snorkeling, diving, fishing. Uh, it doesn't have the reef right up next to its shores like Ambergris Key does, but it does have those things about a, a 30, 40 minute boat ride out in, into the Caribbean Sea. So it does have that going for it. Uh, prices in Placencia are steadily rising. You can't find as many good deals there as you used to be able to find, but I still think it's a good bang for the buck. You can you, your your dollar will go a long way there, and uh, I would say for fifteen percent of my clients who aren't buying an Ambergris Key, then they're buying in Placencia, so that's a good option as well. Uh, the Cayo District. Now here's a dris district that I think is a lot of fun. It's a great place to spend some time and. It could be a place that you might want to have a retirement home. When it comes to this area, there is so much to do in terms of Mayan ruins, canoeing, cave exploring, um, jungle trekking, horseback riding, excuse me, things like that. I really like this part of Belize. Here's some pictures that show you what it's like. What I find is that uh, people, again, tend to move to this part of the country uh, when they're looking for more of a private life or if they're looking for more acreage. Uh, for example, some of my clients who have come down from Michigan or Colorado, they'll say, you know, I'm looking for a 10 or 20 or 50 acre property. You're probably not going to find that in places like Corozal, Ambergris Key, Key Cocker, even Placencia. Those are the uh, the real estate there is a little bit higher priced and the parcels tend to be smaller. However, in Cayo, you can get 10, 20, 30 acres of riverfront uh, property and it's not too expensive. It's a great place to have a lot of space for a little bit of money. And again, if you like this sort of lifestyle, this land lifestyle surrounded by lush jungle, uh, you might like the Kyle District. So I, I would suggest you search around the uh, San Ignacio town area. There's two towns there, San, San Ignacio, Santa Elena. They border the Guatemalan border. Um, it's very pretty. And what I find about this area that even my clients who end up buying and spending the most of their time in Ambergris Key or Placencia, they love to go to this area of the country for a week or two and really explore and disconnect. It's a special place. So uh, take that and, and see, what you, uh, see what you can do with that. Ambergris Key, my absolute favorite. Again, Steph and I have lived there for uh, over 11 years, and we absolutely love it. It's got my favorite restaurants in the world, my favorite vibe in the world. Um, just getting up in the morning and having coffee, watching that sunrise, uh, evening sundowners, it, it's just a very, very special place. Here are some pictures. So those of you who haven't been here before can understand why. Uh, this is an aerial shot. Your lower right-hand corner shows the aerial shot of San Pedro Town. That is currently the only town on Ambergris Key. What appeals uh, to my clients about Ambergris Key is this. Everything water-related is literally at your front doorstep. So you're snorkeling, diving, fishing, kayaking, uh, you're sailing with the kites, kite sailing, parasailing, boating. Everything related to the water is literally right at your beachfront. So you don't have to go anywhere to experience those type of things. Also, it's got the highest quality of living in terms of services and amenities and creature comforts. So yes, you can find a place off the grid. You can live off the grid very simply, but within about a 10 minute golf cart right away, you can be at a world-class restaurant, drinking the finest wine, eating the best filet mignon, uh, sushi at Blue Water Grill, other places, uh, dinner at... Um, a host of places, Mambo's at Mata Chica, Victoria House, um, Gyoto's, which is a new Japanese restaurant inside the Mahogany Bay Village. So just a, a lot of really, really cool uh, places to go. Also has high-speed internet, good cell phone service, um, just a lot to do. Good music, many nights during the week at places like Fido's and other places. So 
what I find is people looking to live that Jimmy Buffett, Kenny Chesney lifestyle who really want to, you know, check out of American life, but check into the island life. This appeals to them the most. Now, what are the pros and cons? Well, property values on the island of Amherst Key are the highest property values in Belize. There's a reason for that. Number one, it is the most developed island and it does have the most services and amenities. So you're going to be paying a little bit more for your property there, but uh, you can still find some really good deals. And I'm going to show you some of those good deals here as we go along to the webinar. Finally, the island of Key Calker, which is just to the south of Ambergris Key. This is a smaller island. We call it a sister island to Ambergris Key. Uh, there's about 1,500 people that live there. And uh, here are some pictures of it. Again, uh, absolutely stunning. For those of you who haven't been, Key Calker is at least worth spending two or three days on. Maybe not a whole lot more than that. Unless uh, unless you'd like to be, be somewhere where you get completely bored. Um, Key Cocker is great, though. I, I love it. We have some, uh, some of our clients have purchased property there. It's very laid back. Uh, sandy streets. You find most people don't even wear shoes or flip-flops when they're walking around the streets. And what I like about Key Cocker is you really feel like you've taken a step back in time. When you get off the water taxi, if you take a water taxi from Ambergris Key, the 20, 25 minutes over, you step off the boat and uh, you're welcomed by, by these palm trees on the beach. You're thinking, my goodness, this this is just an awesome place. Uh, we first visited Key Cocker back in 2002 and uh, it, I don't think it's changed much since then. You really like it. And I, I know there are some uh, good property deals on Key Cocker, especially for beachfront, off beach, and single family homes. So if you're interested in seeing any of those, let me know and I'll send you some links. All right, so what is all of this translating to uh, for the country of Belize, all these different areas? Well, tourism we find has greatly increased over the last 10 years, year after year after year. And I've done entire webinars on this, so I won't get into the numbers too much, especially to, to bore those who have seen this before. But the tourism is an important marker for us to look at because it's a signal for immediate and especially for future growth. So it tells us what the property values are going to do. It tells us what property availability is going to be like. And it also tells us the occupancy rates and rental returns that we can expect to see in the future. Because if we know who's coming to the island, where they're coming from, what they're spending their money on, what they're looking at, then we can have sort of this this crystal ball and a little bit of a look into the future uh, to see what we can expect and what areas we expect uh, to see a major increase. So again, I've already gone over this slide at the, at the beginning, 14.6% increase over overnight arrivals compared to 2017. Now, the reason this is so significant is because of the next slide. So looking over the past three years, the past three years, the tourism in Belize has experienced double digit increase year over year. So it's growth on top of growth on top of growth. And here's a neat little slide showing you some of those numbers. I've got some arrows pointing uh, to the major numbers, the, the significant increases in tourism. For example, in the left-hand column, I have the tourism numbers of 2015 compared to 2016. And if you notice the blue arrows, look at the percentage of increase that happened during those months. And again, this is overnight guest, 24% in January, 20.2% in May. And then let's look at 2016's numbers. 24% increase in April, 19% in August, 22.7% in November. And then 2017's numbers compared to 2018, 26% increase in January, 22% increase in March, 19% increase in July. What we're finding is that there is a great need for overnight rentals in places like Ambergris Key, Key Cocker, and even in Placentium, because the numbers of people that are coming is simply is more than what we can hold. So what we're finding is now uh, people are choosing other destinations just because they can no longer come to Belize and get what they want. In fact, just today I was looking at Airbnb and I was surprised that for next week how little was available and the nicer properties. They're just all booked up. We have very high occupancy rate. Now the question is, are these tourists also looking to buy property? Because I think uh, if you're attending this webinar today, then you're probably interest, interested not just in vacationing in Belize, but also owning property in Belize. This is a real estate webinar. So 
before I get into this next slide, let me just uh, do this one last poll. And I won't bother you again with this. I'm going to launch this poll simply asking you, what has you interested in owning Belize real estate? So if you just take a minute and vote, it says uh, number one is I'm looking for a possible retirement home. Number two, I'm looking for a vacation home to use a few weeks or months a year. Number three, I'm looking for a financial investment. Or number four, all of the above. So if you would, just go ahead and take a minute and vote. And then I'm going to uh, close the poll out when I see you, uh, when I see the voting dwindling down. Let me just grab a little drink of water here while I'm doing that. Thank you. All right. So appreciate you voting. It's very kind of you. Thank you in advance. This information does help. It helps me to know uh, what type of information I can provide you that's beneficial and that can help you in your search. All right. I'll go ahead and close the poll now and I'll share the results on my screen with all of you. So 22% are looking for a retirement home. 11% are looking for a vacation home. And 67% are looking for all of the above. All right. So I guess that uh, that means all of you. So who are your competition? If you're looking for a retirement home, if you're looking for a vacation home or an investment property, you need to know are other people, number one, coming to the island or coming to Belize because that's going to affect your investment. That's going to affect your occupancy rates, what you can charge as a nightly rate. If you're looking for a retirement home, especially if retirement isn't for five to 10 years down the road, you need to think to yourself, do I buy something now or do I wait? If I wait, what will prices be like? What will my options be like? So take a look at this next screen. I'll hide the, the results of this poll. Go on the next screen. I just pulled these numbers off the internet. Uh, 880 people a month on average are typing in the keywords Averitus Key Real Estate. 18,100 average people per month are typing in Belize Real Estate. So we're getting, in, in January, so look at these numbers, in January 2019, we had about 50,000 people come to Belize, all right? Now, again, out of the 50,000 that come, a lot of them end up on Ambergris Key. And so how many of them sat in their living rooms before they came and typed in the words Belize Real Estate or Ambergris Key Real Estate? Well, it shows the high percentage of interest in real estate compared to those that are coming down. Now, what happens is a lot of times people visit the country of Belize. Uh, for example, those who visit in January, they'll go home and then they'll say, wow, you know what? That, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then they'll sit down and start to Google Belize real estate, Ambergris Key real estate. So you got to ask yourself, if this many people are visiting in Belize and this many people are actively looking at buying Belize real estate, then what what would be a good reason for me to buy now compared to later? All right. This is not a sales pitch. This is just a fact. I'll give you an example. Uh, in the past 24 hours, we had five beachfront lots sell near Secret Beach. So in literally 24 hours, uh, we had our inventory drastically reduced. There's hardly any beachfront left now that I know of. I have one or two lots left near Secret Beach, a few lots left north, north of the split. Um, but just that quick, we reduced our inventory. Now, if you're in the market for a beachfront property, what do you think your, your options are now, now that we had so many sales in the past few, few, a few hours? Well, something to think about, something I'm going to talk about more here in just a little bit. Let me just show you what's going on as people research Belize Real Estate. I have a Facebook page called Belize Islands Real Estate, and my website is highlighted on there. And I post different properties for sale. Some of my own personally, they're my own personal properties that I've invested in that I'm selling. Uh, some are for other clients who have bought and sold through me. But uh, this is just a number that I, I pulled off the internet yesterday. Uh, just in the past seven days, I've had 68,000 post engagements and a few of my more popular posts on Facebook, which resulted in 2,172 link clicks. So 2,000 people plus were so interested in what I had posted regarding Belize Real Estate that they clicked on the link, went to my website, viewed my videos, requested information, and this is just in the past seven days. So I think it's pretty cool, not, not bragging, maybe doing some humble bragging here, but um, I do that so you know as my clients uh, what's going on on Ambergris Key. Now, here are some more gratuitous lifestyle photos to see why I like the island so much. People are asking me all the time, where should I be looking to buy? Well, 
you know, that's that's subjective because most of you haven't been here before. So I've gone over some of the details regarding Corozal, Placencia, uh, Key Cocker, places like that. I can tell you that I prefer personally Ambergris Key, and I find that most of my clients do as well because of all the reasons I just mentioned. And what I would encourage you to do is look at areas that are in the path of progress, areas that are growing, areas that have a reason to appreciate and value, and areas where you can still get good deals. So, for example, this is the Secret Beach area. Uh, again, it, it's grown a lot in the past couple of years. It now has several restaurants and beach bars. A client of mine uh, is building a very nice single-family home out there. Uh, other clients of mine are looking at opening up uh, beach bars and building homes and small resort projects. So, uh, really, really fun part of the island. But here's what I think is pretty cool. I have a waterfront lot for sale which is about 1.02 miles north of Secret Beach. Beautiful area of the island, crystal clear waters. And this, this lot is on an interior cove. So it's protected against some of the wave action that you might see uh, right on the shores of the west side. Uh, beautiful spot. If you build up a story or two, you're just going to have incredible views. Now, this is a great price on this lot, 95000 U.S. And this is actually true waterfront beachfront property for 95,000 US. It's got free and clear title. You can buy this with your personal funds or funds that you might already have in your IRA. It qualifies for an IRA purchase. You can talk to me about that a little bit more if you're interested. And financing is available on this one. So uh, the terms are negotiable, but if you think you might be interested, let me know. Here is a picture or a, a map of where it's located. So you see the yellow pin there. It is parcel 8450. Again, it's on the interior cove, but leads right out to the crystal clear waters of Ambergris Bay. So you can have your boat literally at your doorstep and you can be out to those beautiful waters and uh, just down to Secret Beach in a few minutes. So this is one of my best deals. That's why I'm uh, pitching it today in this webinar. Here's some pictures of the area. I was up there recently, installed some signs on some of the lots I have for sale. Uh, I have a few more up there. If you want uh, some comparative options, go ahead and email me after this webinar, and I'll tell you what those are. I also have this lot. It is parcel number 8642. It's a beautiful, oversized lot. It's, again, it's about uh, this one's about, I think it's 0.6 miles north of Secret Beach. This is available for 185,000 US, which is a very good price. It also comes with uh, seller financing. So the uh, seller will actually hold the note, hold the loan. And again, free and clear title right on Ambergris Bay, overlooking Cairo Rosario, uh, overlooking Blackador Key. Beautiful, beautiful spot in the island. Here are some pictures of it. Nice sandy beach, crystal clear waters, perfect place for your family vacation home, retirement home, or small boutique uh, hotel project. This is, again, pictures of Secret Beach, uh, right at Secret Beach itself. I have uh, two third-row lots that I just listed, lots 52 and 53. These are listed at 75000 per lot, so 150 for both. They have to be sold as a package, and there's a great value to that because there are very, very few lots left in this area where you could actually get two side-by-side -side lots. This happens to be one of them. Uh, I don't believe this one comes with financing. The sellers like to cash out and buy a condo. Uh, on Ambergris Key, so they're looking for cash offers. So 75 a piece, 150 for both, uh, puts you in a great spot right at Secret Beach where all the action is. So that's what I had to say today. And uh, I know I've been taking questions from many of you over the past few days. Thank you for emailing those in. So uh, now I'm going to uh, open it up to the audience. So I'll take your questions live, but also I want to answer some questions that have come in uh, for those who registered just uh, in the past few hours, past few days, I want to get to those as well. So let me just grab a glass of water here, and then I'll get right to answering your questions. So if you have any questions, for those of you on the live webinar, uh, go ahead and uh, and type those in. For those of you who are attending live today on the uh, Facebook live stream, I don't know if I can see your – I can't see. I can't see your questions. I'm sorry. You're probably commenting. Wait one second. This is all new to me. No. That wasn't it. No, that wasn't it. I can't see. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. You can't answer, ask questions, but um, hopefully the other ones that the people ask will be beneficial to you. So grab a glass of water, and uh, we'll get right back to you. All right. So uh, Brad has a question. Uh, thanks, Brad, for your question, by the way. Appreciate that. Appreciate you attending and your question. So his question is, what do management companies charge when taking care of rentals. So this, this is actually a really good question, and I'll answer that 
uh, by showing you another slide here because I had this question come in about Airbnb. There we go. So there's two ways to rent out your property and how you do that will depend on what exactly you own and where you own it and what part of an association you may or not be part of. As an example, if you have a beachfront home that you own free and clear, let's say it's on Secret Beach, or an off-beach home that you think is desirable to rent on Airbnb, then you can put that, you can get a hotel tax license for that property, and you can put that on Airbnb, VRBO, Home Away, and you can rent that out yourself. Now, if you live on the island, you can handle all your own check-in, check-out, so you don't need a property manager, so there's no split there. If you need a property manager for a place like a single-family home, then there are property managers on island that specialize in that, and they normally take 25% of the nightly rate. So you get 75% of the nightly rate, they get 25%, and they'll handle things like taking care of the housekeeping, um, paying your bills for you, um, check-in, check-outs, things like that. If you own a condo in a resort that handles all the management for you, in other words, uh, the resort has a website, they do all the advertising, they book the people in, they have the housekeeping staff, there's a pool on site, you know, it's more of a place like um, Cocoa Beach, Grand Cree, places like that, then normally you're going to look looking at a 60-40 split. So you, the owner, keep 60% of the profit, the property management company keeps 40%. So that's the way that works. Um, is there uh, is one better than the other? Well, not really. It just depends on what you want your involvement to be. Uh, for example, uh, I found that you can do quite well with Airbnb if you're creative, if you have a nice property that you can market properly, that you can add value to. Uh, for example, if two side-by-side -side homes are sitting next to each other and they're both advertised at the same nightly rate, one could rent a lot higher depending on what it includes. For example, you might include in it um, maybe a, a, a free snorkel trips or a boat captain or a private chef that comes in a couple times a week and cooks fresh dinner of lobster and fish. Or you might spruce it up somehow to make it more attractive. You might include things that the other house doesn't. So you can always add value. With other places like a resort complex, you might not be able to add value because all of the rentals might have to be the same. But uh, you also don't have to do anything, right? So there's no advertising, there's no clients to deal with. You might get a little bit less money, uh, but uh, you also don't have any influence over the property. And you might not want that. You might just want to turn the key and leave when you leave the island, uh, turn the key and open the door when you get back. You just want to have everything taken care of. So it really depends on your style and uh, and what you're looking to do. But thanks a lot for the question, Brad. Uh, let me know if that answered it for you, if you have uh, anything else. I did have a question come in regarding property taxes. And uh, this is always a fun subject to talk about because one of the things I failed to mention is that many people are attracted to Belize because of the low property taxes. For example, uh, one of the beachfront lots that we just sold, uh, this is an actual property tax statement, and I've covered up the names in, in pertinent information to protect the owners. Uh, but you can see this is an actual tax statement from the San Pedro Town Council, and the tax bill on this is 300 Belize dollars a year. So that's $150 a year for a piece of beachfront property. And the, the, the cool thing is, if you were to build a home on here, then you, your taxes will go up by approximately 100, 125 bucks a year. So imagine that for 250 bucks a year, that's your property tax bill. That's, that's pretty darn good. Uh, you rent it out for a night or two and, and you just paid your tax bill with that. So pretty, pretty interesting. Um, High-end condos, uh, condos around the six to $700,000 range, your taxes might be $450 a year for that. But again, very reasonable, especially as if you look at places like uh, Miami and uh, you know places like that where a similar type condo or beachfront home your property tax is just going to go through the roof So another reason why people like Belize and a few more questions come in. So we appreciate that Let's see So here's another question about rentals. Let's go just go back to that for a minute So I want to flush this out while we're on the top on the same topic So how do rental pools in condos work now? This this is interesting. So there are different ways that property managers and condo resorts handle their their pools. Some go on a rotating basis. So for example, let's say you own a one-bedroom condo, and in this resort complex, there are 10 one-bedroom condos. 
what some might do was have a rotating basis. So uh, your condo is rented uh, this week. Next week, it's condo number two's turn, condo number three's turn, and they pull the money into all together at the end of the quarter. And whatever money is there, they distribute that evenly among the 10 condo owners. It's a pooled uh, share. Others, it, it could be a little bit different. Others, you could actually get the money that comes in from the rental of your specific unit. For example, if you use your place let's say during the high peak months of December through April, if that's when you're down on an island and then you choose to put it in a rental pool in months that maybe have a lower occupancy rate, maybe August, September, October, then you might only get the rental income from your unit. And that's fair because why should you get rental income from other people's units uh, when you got to use the prime months yourself and now you want to rent it out during the, uh, the, the lower occupancy months? So it depends. It really depends on the exact place, how they structure their deals, uh, also, some resort complexes do allow individual condo owners to drive traffic to their condo, but still have it rented through the uh, through the property management company. Example, if you own a condo at Grand Carib, uh, they have a property management company on site, but you are allowed to place your own listings on, on uh, Airbnb or places like that, drive traffic to it, uh, but then they, they still take their cut. But still, it's a good deal because you can add value to your property. So hope that answers your question, Brad. Appreciate it again. Let's take another question here that had come in yesterday. And this is about weather and hurricanes. So Beth wants to know, do, do I have to worry about hurricanes? So that's, that's a good question. Do I have to worry about them? Well, no, you, you really shouldn't worry about them. Um, and, and here's why. First of all, you know, there are lots of places in the United States where people go to and live that have a, a high risk rate of something bad happening, and yet they don't even give any thought. Now, for example, Florida gets hit by hurricanes all the time, and yet the amount of people who are buying and moving to Florida is just off the records. Um, you know, California could have a major earthquake. I was just watching a show last night, in fact, it was Shark Tank, and uh, in Oklahoma, uh, these, these, these couple of guys got together and they're building these tornado shelters that are a bed. Uh, so it's in, it's in the base of the bed and the bed rises up so your family can run in in case of a tornado. Just insane. So there are dangers, I guess, wherever you want to live. But the good thing about hurricanes is that they give you a four to five day warning before they hit. This is the only natural disaster that actually warns you and tells you I'm coming. And if I look big and bad enough, you might want to get out of the way. You can't do this with a, with a, with a tornado. Uh, you can't do this with an earthquake. And many times with fires that affected California here recently, those things come quick. And sometimes you leave you little opportunities to, to, to get to a place of personal safety. So number one thing you got to know is that when hurricanes are coming toward Belize, everybody keeps an eye on them. We watch them. And if it looks like they're going to hit it off, we simply get off the island. Now, I've been in the island where we evacuated twice. That's it. Twice in 11 years. Got off the island because it looked like something was going to come close. It didn't end up hitting us. But either way, we felt safer getting off. We went to the hills of, of the uh, San Ignacio area up in the Cayo District. So we just had um, a little hurricane party up there. You use it as an excuse to vacation a little bit. But um, hang on one second. So you just get off the island. And the second reason we don't worry about them there so much is because of what I'm showing in this picture. Now, this picture was taken after a major storm had hit Ambergris Key several years ago. And you can see that a storm had hit because look at very close to the shoreline. You see a lot of uh, uh, silt sediment that's been churned up. So a lot of rain hit the island and that rain caused the, the murky waters there right at the shore. Uh, but look at what's happening along the reef line. Now that barrier reef, the second longest barrier reef in the world, protects the entire island of Ambergris Key. And if you notice those huge waves breaking on the reef, so those are some pretty significant waves coming in off the ocean. You notice they break on the reef, and then what do you see from the reef to the shores of Ambergris Key? You see calm. You see those waters are calm. That reef took the brunt of the storm surge. And so, yes, once in a while, a hurricane can come through and it can ruin some docks and you know mess up the island a bit. This happened just a few years ago. But 
we don't have to worry about major storm surge. We don't have to worry about public uh, safety or personal safety. We just get off the island if something's coming. And number three is we insure our properties. So in anything where there's a risk involved, you simply get insurance. You have insurance on your expensive cars. You have insurance on your health. You have a life insurance on your life. And we simply have something called all perils insurance in Belize. So you can insure your property, uh, whether it's concrete or wood construction, there's a price difference on that. And that guarantees you that in the event of something major hitting and your property being damaged, you're covered. So you don't have to worry about that either. So I guess don't worry about hurricanes. Uh, we have a 17% chance of getting hit in any given year. Florida has like a 70% chance. So uh, come down to Belize, have a nice time, and uh, don't worry about things like that. You'll be just fine. Just, just my two cents. Never had a problem with them. Another question that came in yesterday is... How easy is it to get around in Belize? And so here's the thing, and, and I wanted to mention this back when I was going through the different places where you might consider buying and retiring. First of all, you have two major components to Belize. You have a mainland component. If you buy a place on the mainland, you will need to get a vehicle, a car, a truck, something like that to get around. Distances are far. So if you're in those places, even like Placencia, uh, you can go to Placencia on vacation for a week without a car. But if you live there, you absolutely need a car. Uh, if you're on the island of Amherst, Kierke, Cocker, then we use golf carts. So it's really cool to get around in a little open-air golf cart. Uh, they used to be electric, now they're gas because uh, gas golf carts can get you around the island a little bit quicker and a little bit farther. You don't have to worry about uh, draining a battery in the middle of any uh, nowhere and having to push your golf cart home. But to explore the country of Belize, it is very, very simple. Here's what I really love about it is you can be on the island of Amherst, Key. You can fly to the mainland, you can go cave tubing, you can go canoeing, you can explore the Mayan ruins and fly back and do that in a single day. Or you can go from San Pedro uh, to the Belize City Airport and then from Belize City down to Placencia and you can enjoy a week in Placencia exploring it down there or Punta Gorda or uh, Corozal or, or all these different places. So I posted on the screen, for those of you who can't see, a list of everywhere that Tropic Air flies. These are very quick flights. They're very reasonably priced, and you can just get all over the country and see a lot in uh, in a short period of time. So very easy to get around in Belize. For those of you who haven't been to the country before, when you fly in for the United States and Canada, you'll fly into the Belize City International Airport. The airport code is BZE. When you fly in there, that is just a, a transfer through airport. Nobody stays there. They go somewhere else. So they go out to uh, San Pedro, Kikawker. They take flights out to those areas. A um, little bit more difficult to get to Corozal because you have to fly to San Pedro first, then Corozal. But we also have flights from Cancun. So you can fly from Cancun down to uh, Belize via Tropic. You can go out and visit the island of Roatan, Honduras via Tropic. And uh, you can even take a Tropic flight over the uh, Great Blue Hole and to see it from the air. So that's kind of cool as well. All right, so here's another question by Greg. Uh, Greg has a question, and thank you for this. I'm glad you brought this up, because this is my, my next point on my list, is, is Belize safe? So that's a question, because some of your research might have turned up uh, statistics about crime, um, murder rate, things like that. And some of that information is true, and then some of it is is not true. Okay. So you have true, you have not true, and then you have perception, public perception, and then you have reality. And what I mean by that is where you live right now, uh, your hometown, wherever you live in the United States, I bet if I got on the internet and I typed in crime rate where you live or uh, number of burglaries in your home area or number of this or th this or that, it would look like where you live is a very dangerous place. And if that's what the information I received, I probably wouldn't want to visit you at your home. I know where I grew up in Bay City, Michigan, it seemed to be a very safe town, but I had a friend who worked in the police department and he said, you wouldn't believe the things that are going on. Well, I didn't ever feel on ease. I mean, I didn't have any problems. My family didn't have any problems. Uh, so here's the thing. A lot of the crime that you're reading about in Belize is happening on the mainland. So first of all, find out where it's happening. It's happening in Belize City, which is where bulk of the crime takes place, or in rougher parts of the mainland. And there's always a reason for that. And there's no excuse. I'm not making excuses for violent crimes or other things like that. But sometimes if you follow the path back to its source, you find that 
the crimes are being committed by those who are involved in things they shouldn't be involved in. Uh, very rarely do you have an innocent victim. Not saying that they're not, because uh, that's not true. But uh, what we find is that that type of crime is far removed uh, from Belize City. We do not have the same issues as the mainland does. We are very protected in Key Conquer and Amherst Key against the bulk of that crime. And so when something does happen on the island, it makes the news and it stays in the news. Why? Because uh, San Pedro is a place where only 24, 25,000 people live. So if something happens, then it, it makes the news. However, if you talk to the expats living in Belize, living on Amherst Key right now, Jeff Bella, Robert Cologne, two very good friends of mine. If you talk to uh, the San Pedro Scoop, uh, who has a blog about Belize, uh, if you talk to all these other expats who have chosen to make Belize their home, they would tell you they feel safe, they feel comfortable, uh, they don't feel nervous, they don't have any issues. And if you do come across reports of, of things happening on the island, most often you will find that they can be traced back to people doing things or being involved in things they should not be involved in. For example, I had a client of mine come down and he thought it was perfectly fine for him to go out uh, to all the local bars at two or three in the morning and get wasted and hang with characters of dubious qualities. And even though he was warned, against doing this. He thought he knew better. And uh, one night, sure enough, on the way home, he was followed and somebody got his wallet and took all of his other valuables. And then he complained saying, uh, oh, the island is a dangerous place. Well, you know, I, I challenge you to go into any uh, local neighborhood bar at two or three in the morning uh, and get wasted and use drugs and everything else uh, night after night and something not happened to you. You're just putting yourself in uh, in dangerous way. So from my experience and lots of others, you live a safe life. You don't get involved in things you shouldn't be involved in, and you should do quite fine in Belize and actually in most of the world. I've been to 30 countries, never had a problem in any of the 30 countries I've been to or countries I've lived in. And uh, I think you just have to have a little bit of common sense no matter where you are. So let's just go. I saw some um, couple more, a couple more emails come in. First of all, this is a question from Clay. Thanks, Clay. First of all, I appreciate you uh, tuning in today. Exciting to uh, have you come down to the island, uh, what, in about another week or so? So first time coming to the island. I'm excited to uh, see what you think of it. So your question is, do they have Ubers in Belize? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, in Belize City, I don't believe so. I think they just use taxis still. I've never tried to hail an Uber in Belize, actually. Um, on Ambergris Key, no, because everybody uses golf carts. There are taxis on Ambergris Key. Uh, but I would, I don't know about, about Ubers in Belize. Maybe somebody else can answer that for me. Um, just don't know. Never had, ne don't spend enough time there to uh, to want to find out, to be honest. Uh, but Ambergris Key, you have taxis to get around or you just rent a golf cart when you come. So another question here comes in. Let me just pull it up. Uh, all right. So I see, Clay, that you said to check my email. I can't check email on the live webinar. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you had a question about uh, Ambergris Key compared to sea levels, the sea level. All right. So very good. So if you notice, Ambergris Key is a coral atoll. And it seats it sits several feet above sea level, so it's not a volcanic island. It's not like Roatan or other parts of the Caribbean where you have large hills. It's a very very flat island, flat as a pancake. And uh, as you saw, in fact, let's just go back to a picture so you can see. Um, you can see. I think it, this picture is a good one. You can see how flat it is. Very good. Uh, so, to my knowledge, uh, we have not had any sea level rise in the past several decades. Uh, I can't confirm that. I know it's never been an issue so far. Uh, we haven't seen any significance in sea level rises. And as much research as we've done on this, obviously, because we're looking at a, uh, a coral atoll here, is that even if sea level rise does take place, it'll be decades into the future. And still, we have enough height that the beachfront properties are not going to be affected. So right now, uh, I, can, I can tell you this. Enough research has been done by the major hotel groups, uh, and I'm talking the big boys, and some I can't mention here in this webinar, it's still confidential, uh, but others I can, such as uh, the Hilton, uh, the Marriott, uh, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, the Four Seasons, and a few others, 
who are actively investing on the island for long-term returns. So that, you know, they're not planning on making any money for, for you know, a few decades. It's like a major investment. Uh, they're looking at recouping their money over, over long periods of time, you know, 50, 100, 150 years or more. These have done enough research to feel very comfortable in planning for a 50 to 100 year uh, growth, growth project on the island of Ambergris Key. So that's a very real thing. I don't think individual property owners or individual small hoteliers uh, should have any concerns regarding uh, sea levels. Um, again, it hasn't been a problem. And with hurricanes, we are protected against those. So uh, it's uh, not, a, not a problem as far as we're concerned. Not something we're even checking, uh, thinking about. We also have, um, here's a question also from Clay. I'm not sure what it it says investment values for condos, rehabs, new construction, existing bungalows. There, you know, we don't have an MLS in Belize. Uh, so there's no one place to go to look at all the properties that are offered. Each real estate company has their own website. Uh, there's some people that call themselves an MLS, but they're not. They're just a group of uh, realtor, realtors who got together to post all their listings at one common place, but it's by no means extensive. Oh, hang on one second. Is that you? Hey, sweetie. My wife just got home. How you doing, baby? Hi. Hey, just doing my live webinar to my Belize clients. Awesome. All right. Hello. Yeah, my wife says hello. Steph says hello. All right. So this question about investment values. Okay, going back, we don't have an MLS, um, but investment, it's, I don't know how to really answer that because the, I know how to answer it from a financial point of view. For example, if you were telling me you want to invest in property strictly for the financial return, I would tell you what to buy, where to buy, how much to pay. But something, sometimes there's a lifestyle component which you need to take into consideration. So you might be buying primarily for the investment return, but because you're going to get so much out of it in terms of lifestyle and use and enjoyment and making memories with family and friends and things like that, uh, that property might be different than a property that you buy simply for the uh, for, for the financial return. Uh, there's a few deals on island that I think are worth looking at, especially lots in the area of Secret Beach, uh, both off beachfront and off beach lots. I think there's some a few rehab projects too that are very attractive to the right person. Um, and then there's, uh, I guess, just lower priced real estate, lower priced condos. I think there's a few condos down in the Banana Beach complex that are for sale for actual beachfront one bedroom condos that are a really good deal for someone. There are some condos at the Mar Laguna property. And again, these aren't my listings. These are just things that I think are good deals. I can send you information on them if you'd like. Um, also, I think any, anywhere that's in the path of progress, which means anywhere where there's a new road going in, where there are utilities coming in, where there's something major developing. And I'll give you an example. The, um, the Margaritaville property that is going to be opening up in 2020, which is about 13 miles north of town, uh, an investor should be picking up real estate all around there, all around there, beachfront, off beach, doesn't matter what it is, because that's going to be such a draw and an anchor for North Ambergris Key that property values will do very well up there and you'll be able to benefit off each other. For example, if you open up a beach bar, a restaurant, um, you know, even, a, even another boutique hotel or a condo project that's close to Jimmy Buffett's, all that foot traffic that's going to be going through there starting in 2020, that, that's going to be a lot of people who love the island lifestyle, who can afford to live like Jimmy Buffett. You know, uh, They're going to be looking for a place. And what we're finding is that where people stay and, and enjoy their time in the island is where they want to buy. So if they stay at Jimmy Buffett's for a week, they're going to want to buy up there. They fall in love with that part of the island. And in fact, if you want to see that, I just posted a video uh, of where that property is located on my YouTube channel. So just type in, uh, go to YouTube, type in Dennis K. Belize, my YouTube channel pop up, and it's the last video I just, I just posted this morning. All right. Take a few more questions here. Uh, so now here's a good question. <clears throat> Is the airport uh, re a reality or a myth? Okay, so this is good because there's been a lot of talk over many years about an international airport coming to Ambergris Key. And I've done an extensive webinar on this. So I won't get into all the details, 
there are pros and cons in the minds of many locals and expats, whether the island needs an international airport or not. And I'm going to remain neutral on that. I'm, you know, I, I'm not neither here nor there. But I think it's going to happen because the amount of people who are coming to the island uh, will eventually exceed the capacity of Tropic Air, my island air, to get them out. Even right now, you fly in uh, anywhere between January through April, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna find a hard time getting over to the island. You're gonna have to pre-book your Tropic Air flight, uh, maybe even take a water taxi because they can only take so many people back and forth by those shuttles. So I do think it's going to happen. The land is set aside for it. And there has been talk of, uh, of an investor group uh, looking at uh, actually taking it on and building it all up there. Now, as recently as two days ago, the Minister of Tourism, Mr. Heredia, was actually up there with a group of investors walking the property. Uh, he said that uh, in his official statement, they have made no decision to invest in the airport. However, they are looking at investments on the island, and that was one of them. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to happen. Now, will it happen uh, next year or the year after? Well, a project of that size is going to take a while to complete, but I, I do think it'll happen. Uh, maybe even it'll become a North Island airstrip. So let's say it handles smaller planes, or maybe uh, it gets to the point where Tropic can fly up there because of there's there's things going on. Um, but I do think it's going to happen. Absolutely. It will happen because when you look at islands like the Caymans, you look at um, other small islands that are comparable in size in the Caribbean, they have international airports and there gets to the point where you just, it needs it to sustain the growth. And there is a lot of property on Ambergris Key up in that area and I can see it happening. So yeah, Clay, Absolutely. Buy property up there. Buy it and hold it. Buy it and forget about it. I mean, if you if you got a, a little bit of extra money, buy a property up there and just view it as a long term hold and just ride that wave. Uh, I've seen nothing but increasing property values, even without the international airport. We've seen property values double over the past couple of years. So something like that pops. Uh, Jimmy Buffett's pops. It's it's going to be looking looking pretty good for all uh, all owners up there. Let me see what time it is. Okay. All right. 2.05 Eastern time. So I've been going for just over an hour. Uh, what I'll do is I will officially end the webinar here. Appreciate all your questions. It's been a lot of fun today. Uh, if you want to know anything else about some of the deals that I highlighted today, some of those beachfront properties, off-beach properties, if you're looking for a condo, single-family home, island, uh, a condo at Margaritaville, something like that, go ahead and email me. Dennis KII is my email. Looking forward to working with you soon. All right, guys. Take care. Cheers. Have a great day.